This is One Great Earth. My name is Dan. I hope you are well. We got a lot to get into. A lot of new wildfire news. The wildfire in Northern California is over 120,000 acres. And there is also in Jasper, Alberta, where there is a devastating amount of destruction due to wildfire spreading. Um, this is uh, good news out of uh, Canada's Alberta Jasper National Park. Rain helps firefighters battle blazes in Canada's Jasper National Park. Town Council of Jasper says about 32% of structures in the town have been destroyed in the blaze. Wildfire complex. Canadians mourn as Jasper, Jewel of the Rockies, burn. Out of a total of 1,113 structures in the town of Jasper, 358 have been destroyed. Wildfire damage is extreme. Let's see if, uh... About 24 minutes ago... Devastation. Here's a um, more recent. We know now that the rain we've seen in the area over the past 24 hours is making a difference. The late night update on Thursday, Jasper National Park said that temperatures cooled and rain started shortly after midnight on Wednesday, resulting in 10 to 15 millimeters of rain and fire behavior and low. Rain forecasted will likely keep fire behavior. Low. The park also says the Jasper wildfire poses no threat to neighboring communities. And estimated to be about 36,000 hectares size. Jasper National Park also shared that all critical infrastructure in Jasper was successfully protected. That includes 
both of elementary and junior and senior school, the emergency services building, among others. Of course, there's many videos on social media showcasing some destruction in town of neighborhoods and businesses. And the park says the most significant damage is on the west side of town. And F firefighting efforts prevented some damage in the east end of town. Jasper Park Lodge was another one that people had questions about, but they said most of the structures, including the main lodge, were intact. Alberta's public safety minister Mike Ellis a picture on Thursday of some of the threats fire. Alberta's public safety minister Mike Ellis painted a picture on Thursday. That's an intense inferno right there. Every bit, every fiber of the home's being is in flames. Of some of the threats firefighters faced. That's that wind gust moved that fire five kilometers in probably less than 30 minutes with a wall of fire that was about 100 meters high. 100 now, meters high? The of what's happening with the rest of the firefight in town and just trying to figure out if their homes have been affected. And they're searching on social media, asking first responders and looking for that information. Mutual aid firefighters are still in. So they saw flames powering over three hundred feet. This is a terrifying wildfire uh, complex. Been waiting to go to Jasper to fight, and there is a command incident center set up here. We also spoke to one woman who is a volunteer firefighter in Jasper, and her young family had to leave their home as the firefighter raid fire raged on, and she was firefighting in that. She even had to watch her own house burn, but she spoke about the hope that people stick on to. You're going to see that there's not a lot in certain spots, but what I'm going to say is don't look at that. You know, as a first responder, I've seen things, and don't look at, don't look at that. You can't, I mean, you're going to see it, but don't focus on that, because there's nothing you can do about that. What we can focus on is what's left, and that's the community. Yeah. Got a named storm, tropical storm, cyclone, named Bud. <clears throat> also looks like the disturbance on the uh, southwest side of Mexico. Okay, let's go look for Jasper because I can see California and Oregon already lit up. Not see any smoke, but this is the park fire here north of Chico. Paradise is just south of this firestorm that's occurring. It occurred, started a few hundred acres, and then it exploded into tens of thousands into where it sits today over 120,000 acres have been burned already fastest growing wildfire this year there's also plenty of wildfires throughout the state of Oregon frustratingly enough in Washington state as well an absurd amount of smoke that's moving throughout the country throughout all of North America, actually. Now you see some smoke here, this haze.
It is a terrible amount of smoke that's creeping throughout the country, coming from the west, Pacific Northwest, and uh, areas in Cal Alberta like Casper. Some massive wildfires, some very, very poor air quality. Although it is getting a little bit better, the fires are still churning out massive amounts of smoke. And nothing thrives under smoke. As you can see, uh, maybe the other one's better. Yeah, you see the fires here raging throughout the Pacific Northwest. There's plenty. But we're not talking about wildfires that are just several hundred acres. We're talking about wildfires that are several thousand acres. Up by Wood Buffalo National Park, the air quality is still very severe, downright dangerous. I feel sorry for the animals that have nowhere to go. They have just outside, and that's it no shelter or safety the animals that don't understand the dangers of smoke FEMA needs to address this already and uh, label wildfire smoke as a disaster a natural disaster we're seeing records amount smoke from Alaska almost to Russia to the United Kingdom. These are not small distances, but this smoke is making that journey. Smoke is sticky. Smoke hits smoke, they'll stick, and they'll both keep going in that same direction because they'll go to the path of least resistance. And smoke will follow smoke. It has a lot of interesting properties, but the most part is that the smoke has to be light enough not filled with particulates from all these wildfires to make these tremendous journeys. You're seeing like wind shearing just tear out massive amounts of material out of the smoke, letting it be light enough to be able to ascend all over the place. This is really bad. Like we're in bad, like, Last year was bad when it was just the Northeast and Midwest, but we're looking at the entire continental United States, all of North America, covered by smoke. This is uh, looking grim, not grim, I'm sorry. It's looking not so good for the central of uh, the Great Plains, the uh, Midwest and Northeast. As the smoke creeps around and causes an extreme amount of risk, nothing fries under smoke and everything gets sick. We don't know these wildfires, especially these wildfires that are burning in California right here, this wildfire that is burning One hundred and twenty thousand acres this fire has burned over the last day covered it they were talking about finding somebody arresting somebody that had something to do with this fire and that's good news but 
just by going from a few hundred acres to tens of thousands of acres in just a few hours. It has to be a record for this year. Already one of the largest fires in California, uh, 2024. Let's try to get closer to these fires and what we can see. Cloud coverage. Uh, yeah. Let me see a camera. We can get closer on a camera. Is this huge, massive wall of smoke? They're saying that they're seeing flames hundreds of feet tall. Is this massive engine of chaos happening right here? Is that that's gone? So many fires. Stretching resources thin. Massive, massive, massive growth just over the last uh, couple of hours. Okay. Oh. Fire's got to be just right next to this camera. Oh, there it is. Yep. fire right here this is, this is not good I mean we're entering August with blazes all over the place that are tens of thousands of acres Canada with over almost 1 million acres so far burned in Canada alone North America is seeing a surge of wildfires lots of fire these trees let's say these trees are 200 feet tall this is the top of this radio tower these flames 50 to 150 feet tall this is severe being very severe wildfire activity exploding throughout california oregon washington alberta and british columbia north america is seeing a huge uptick These are all different fires. These are not just the same fire with different cameras. Keep playing, making runs. Fire. 
tires are just growing, exploding. Oh my god. Is this, uh, Colby, Colby Mountain? This is a raging inferno on top of the mountain. These flames have to be at least 100, 200 feet tall, at least. Go back even further to three hours. Lots of smoke. Within the last two hours. This is hell. You can see all the fires. Right around here, and this right between here. Yeah, but nothing arrives under smoke. What we're seeing here is huge quantities of smoke immersed in That's big. That's a big start. On. Massive. Horrific. Tragic to the wildlife. People in California, please take warning that these wildfires, they move at such tremendous speeds. You have moments, moments, when you're given the go now notification. Thermal. Tremendous flames here. Lots of fire.
Like, there are so many tremendous blazes across the west coast of North America to Alaska. I, there's no one firestorm to look at. There is multiple. It's, it's very frustrating it's how many wildfires there are and how much smoke is being put into the atmosphere. Let's take a, a different look. Have it open still. To the recent. You can see here. Lots of pollution, lots of smoke, lots of red dots you can see here. Carbon monoxide. See how large this fire is here. Very, very, very tragic to local ecology. These fires are man made, they were started by people, person that was arrested. See just how terrible, like dark red right here, this right above this wildfire right here is not good we're seeing huge amounts of plumes of smoke carbon monoxide enter into the atmosphere does this do anything to our carbon budget for the year does california get screwed out of the next year because they didn't include this in their carbon budget now they have to include a relative amount of co2 that's been pumped out co The particulate matter that's being pumped out is incredible. We're seeing huge amounts of smoke, record amounts of smoke, I would dare say, for this year. We looked at the last, I don't know, like north of Chico. And these fires are just enormous smoke walls, they're structures, smoke structures. And they are massive. It is not just that the, the walls that smoke, it's that you're seeing fires that are two to three hundred feet tall. That's terrifying. And people are actively fighting against these. Oh. Oh my god. This is why carbon budget doesn't work because we're not going to count this. California, New Mexico, Oregon, Washington state. We're all having these upticks of wildfires, but this is another level of hell. And this is what we're dealing with. Like, how am I supposed to focus on literally anything else during the stream when there are massive wildfires burning on the other side of the country? Smoke is being put up in mass. These are live cameras, too. These are within the last 30 minutes. I'm not showing you old footage. This is as is happening. Desperation. So 
the park fire is 120,315 acres now. Making it one of the largest, if not the largest, wildfire. Uh, I include Canada. I'd say that is probably the baddest uh, wildfire right now is the park wildfire north of Chico. is disastrous if if the fema does not include smoke especially wildfire smoke as a disaster i mean what are we doing here what is all this about that's just monstrous here it's a major raging inferno a lot of bad stuff <laughs> he was giving me a fat beard. Kicked off me. My little molar. <sighs> so close to paradise here. It's terrible. I hate to see it. Hurricane barrel death toll in Texas rises to 36, including more who lost power in extreme heat. This is from PBS. Houston. The number of Texas deaths after Hurricane Barrel came ashore and knocked out power to millions of residents climbed to at least 36 on Thursday as officials confirmed more than more people who died in homes that were left without air conditioner conditioning during sweltering heat. The medical examiner's office in Fort Bend County confirmed nine more deaths, including four that were at least partially attributed to hypothermia, or when a person's body temperature rises far above normal. At least a dozen other residents in the Houston area also died from complications due to heat and losing power, according to officials. Most Houston residents had their electricity restored last week after days of widespread outages during sweltering summer temperatures. Officials had said some residents and businesses would need to do repairs to damaged equipment they are responsible for before being able to get power. Hunter Point CEO Jason Wells, the head of the city's power utility, apologized to customers Thursday for the customer's response after barrel and told state regulators the utility was already working to better prepare for the next storm. You're not going to change things that quickly, okay? Jason Wells, Center Point CEO Jason Wells, you're not going to cause change overnight. It'll take you a lot longer than this, and plus you're in Texas, so it's different. At the mercy of others. Next storm could be devastating, similar to what we're seeing. And 
they still have no answer to this. Like, well, do better. But we can't tell you what went wrong because we don't know. They don't know how to prepare for a Category 2 hurricane making landfall. How do you deal with that amount of rain and that much water? It is not uh, something I think human beings can do to withstand uh, our current modern infrastructure. It just gets rained out, stormed out, gets hit by lightning, tornadoes, high winds. All possible whenever the hurricane is uh, bracing itself for landfall because hurricanes want to avoid land. They want to go around land as much as possible because landfall for a hurricane is death or cyclone, whichever way, whichever side of the world or that you're coming from. So at Abbott's direction, Utilities Commission has begun investigating center points preparedness in response to barrel. A final report is expected by December 1st. I hope they got that all figured out already because people died because of this. Do you think that it would be a little bit more pressing to have this sooner than later? Instead of like, let's give them six months. That's not final report is expected by December 1st. Get through the hurricane season and that's pain coming out of Texas. People without proper heating and cooling, without power. Africa to overtake Asia with highest number of hungry people by 2030, says United Nations. Annual report says climate crisis, conflict, and economic shocks leave the global food system disastrously vulnerable. Now, I imagine they're also taking into account with like Ukraine, their crop losses, not being able to replant is downright dangerous because the lands are mined. Ukraine is the most dangerous uh, place on earth right now due to the unprecedented amount of mining that the Russians have done throughout Ukraine. It is terrible. This undernourishment in Africa. Africa already has the largest proportion of people who do not have enough nutritious food to eat, but Asia is home to more than half the world's hungry people. In 2030, 384 and a half million people in Asia were facing hunger, compared with 298.4 million in Africa. You gotta grow what feeds you, not what sells. That's hard. There are an estimated 33 million smallholder farms in Africa, which provide up to 70% of the continent's food supply. Climate crisis is having a severe impact on farmers and food security. The Diana Onyango, head of Farm Africa's technical team, in East Africa, where she is based, failed rains since 2020 have led to an extensive drought. 
Farmers lack the information and knowledge to help them diversify, she said. As much as they want to diversify, they might not be able to be, uh, be aware of the best crops, livestock, and practices to apply to help them be more adaptable and resilient to climate change. Conflict is also a major driver of food insecurity. In areas of Ethiopia, farmers cannot access their land and have been forced from their homes. The actual killing fields. It's two years of uh, Ethiopia war. The gray. A lot of farmers were terrorized and killed. A lot of innocent people. It hurts all of Africa to lose farmers. So terrorism that these people have faced, have been felt, especially during the two years of the war, sheer terror and complete uncertainty. To be in Africa right now, to be in Asia right now, hunger or hunger. What are they going to do in another year? Ukraine not being able to supply as much grain to the world as before. Who's going to take up that role in Africa to feed, to help feed Africa? There is a food crisis looming out of the world. It is not just a continent or a country or a state or a province that is having hunger. It's huge swaths of regions on this planet of people going hungry. You have places like Palestine where it's immense, where they're seeing phase five uh, they're facing phase four food insecurity with some experiencing phase five which is catastrophic famine it is chronic food insecurity and it affects millions and millions and millions and millions of people if not two billion talking about half the planet in areas half the planet are experiencing chronic food insecurity it's important to note which countries can fill in these gaps? So far, I have not read any. It used to just be Ukraine, thirty percent. Massive, massive uh, take, uh, massive loss. Ukraine have massive loss of livestock and livelihood. Thanks that. Farmers are still working during a war. He's incredibly admirable and brave. Okay. That's a weird one. It's not a B movie. Scientists say sharks are ingesting cocaine and drug tainted water. Uh, not afraid of sharks? Well, now they're on cocaine. Researchers have confirmed the presence of cocaine in sharks off the coast of Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. Those questions remain about the effects of the drug. 
one of the 13 sharp-nosed sharks caught by researchers off the coast of Rio de Janeiro. All 13 were found to have cocaine in their system. The prospect of sharks lurking just off the beach wasn't frightening enough. Researchers in Brazil have discovered a new reason to be unnerved. Some of them have cocaine in their systems. In a study published last week, researchers tested 13 sharks off the coast of Rio de Janeiro and found that all had traces of cocaine in their liver and muscle tissues. The levels of cocaine found in these sharks reported to be as much as 100 times higher than in previously observed marine life. We were actually dumbfounded. We were excited in a bad way, but it's a novel report. It's the first time this data has ever been found for any top predator. People that ingest the sharks could be ingesting secondhand cocaine. Because it's in the tissue, it's in the muscle of the shark. Not cooking that out. And the sharks, I imagine, would experience the same symptoms that we do, except I can't imagine to be comfortable because they can detect a lot more different signatures than human beings can. Electric impulses and chemical signals. Not as much as they sense blood, they sense the presence of blood. It's a big difference. These chemicals wind up all over the place, but what could be happening here is the sharks are taking a bite out of the cocaine packages that are lost in the water. It takes a quick bite, but if they become addicted and they would seek this stuff out, what happens when killer whales ingest cocaine? We're looking at some really bad times of trying to cruise around on a boat and you have these whales just falling on your ship all over the place just they want that cocaine cocaine sharks the study in brazil was conceived earlier this year after researchers discovered high levels of cocaine in the rivers that form rio de janeiro's watershed other marine experts have looked into whether sharks in the Gulf of Mexico were ingesting cocaine from numerous packages lost or dumped in the waters in a 2023 documentary titled Cocaine Sharks, which served as inspiration for the title of last week's study. We are hoping to do testing and research with sharks, rays, and even sea turtles. Horrible. Human beings have such an awful, profound effect on everything around them. What are we to do? Trying to fight cocaine as a drug entering the country illegally, entering countries illegally. But what about marine life? Is it just the presence of cocaine in the water being dumped at the animals they're ingesting, or are they actually biting lost packages? I would say that if it's being dumped, I mean, it has to be pretty close to it, right? It would just fade out, it would uh, dissolve, it would thin out. There'd have to be a lot of cocaine first off to be dumped and it'd be a cloud of it where the shark would just be in for a minute that would be enough to change oxygen skills to change cocaine particles of cocaine as they breathe them in through their gills or their open mouth Not 
not getting any better. We're in fact making the world worse. I don't mean the doom scroll, but what else are we supposed to do? We have bad people, apparently bad people, doing bad things to animals. Even when they don't mean it. It's sad. More than 100 flights canceled in Germany as environmental activists target airports across Europe. So this is Germany's busiest airport canceled more than 100 flights as environmental activists launched a coordinated effort to disrupt air travel across Europe at the height of the summer holiday season to highlight the threat posed by climate change. So which group did this? The last generation group, which organized a Frankfurt demonstration, said six protesters cut holes in the perimeter fence and headed towards the runways on foot, bicycles, and skateboards. Don't get on the runway. Why would you get on the runway? That is not safe for anyone. It's a very bad idea to be on the runway because you're not looking up, are you? The plane can come down on the runway at any time. Gluing yourself to the taxiway, that's incredible. I I commend a protester for gluing themselves to anything, but gluing yourself to an area where planes land, I mean, people are in the sky. There's souls in the air that need to come down. It, you can't be the one that's disrupting that process. I can't agree with leaving people stranded in the air in a plane, not being able to fly down in a taxi because somebody glued their hand there. It's not, not the fault of the people that bought a ticket. Though I do agree that plane travel is pretty up there with the amount of waste that it generates. It's, you can make an argument that there's a lot of single use being served, a lot of single-serving ser single products. So every time that the plane lands, every time that it sh uh, shifts, it needs to be cleaned. Uh, lots of garbage. Canceling 100 flights in the grand scheme of things might not show much of anything. I mean, you would have to be crowd strike to cut, shut down as many planes flying in the air in one day as they did. There's 100 flights. It's, it's severe and what are we going to do? We have so many years left of our carbon budget. And we're filling it with forest fires and power plants. Carbon dioxide just churning throughout the air. This is 
state F officials to publish data tables for human cases of a avian flu in Colorado. Uh, this update brings Colorado's total number of confirmed avian flu cases to 10. Nine cases at two poultry farms and one case from a dairy farm. Is this H5N1? I imagine this is H5N1. H5. Uh, that's been just all over dairy farms in the last few months. I believe it was over 130 uh, dairy farms. The cows are moved around. They moved out of Texas, and Texas infected everyone. As an example, buying and selling and moving cows. Cows get sick with H5N1. They get sick. And the cream, the, uh, the milk that they give out is yellow and sick is the best way to uh, describe how it looks. I have no idea how it smells. All I know is that cows get sick, they get it all over their body and their eyes. And it really resides a great deal in the udder. At least... We know that is the pasteurization process that allows us to drink milk without uh, dying, getting very, very sick. So the one thing that I can say is don't consume raw milk products. It is very dangerous. You could get sick, very sick. You could also catch H5N1. That's not good for anyone. So it's two more human cases of H5N1, bird flu, with a total of 10 cases in Colorado. Colorado has seen plague. Colorado has seen a number of uh, cases of H5N1 already. I think the most in the country has been Colorado so far. Although it's poultry farms. It's not dairy farms like I imagine it would be constantly because it's just people being around the cows. Bird scat. It's everywhere. So people touch it, people breathe it in. People touch their face or it's their skin. Nobody has died from H5N1. And the people that get sick from it seem to be okay after a few days i there is nobody high profile that's been infected with h5n1 yet a lot of people that work on farms which don't make the headlines as much now with colorado seeing 10 i mean this could skyrocket you can see a thousand cases and just wondering like what happened because it's poultry farms Chickens, turkeys, you to work close with them, handle their eggs, wash their eggs. There's a lot of contamination risk to the person that's handling the birds. Now this um, article is from a year ago, but I think it still holds a lot of water. Why scientists are using the word scary over the climate crisis. Uh, 
No, you know what? I don't think I'll read this. Oh, here we go. Carbon budget. The last time we saw the planet at 400 parts per million carbon dioxide was three to four million years ago during the Pliocene, when global levels were 10 to 20 meters higher and temperatures two to three cent, uh, degrees uh, C higher. Those changes happened over millions of years. Now it feels like we are forcing these changes on our planet in far shorter time spans. It's really scary. It seems some of these trends are already underway. She said she feared for the permafrost, the Greenland ice sheet, the Arctic ice, sea ice, and Antarctica's fall ice glacier and western ice sheet. We're seeing record amount of freshwater body of ice floating around away from Antarctica. We're seeing icebergs. 80 miles long this is happening now worst case scenarios are playing out now we're seeing record amount of fire and record amount of time seeing like brazil's wetlands you see africa's wetlands are on fire the wetland in africa in sudan south sudan has been burning all year What is it going to look like for a carbon budget when we add another 100 parts per million due to just these fires burning in the west coast in Canada? These, uh, the fire, everything it touches turns to pollution, you understand? So a fire going across the town, across the city, is putting a lot of very toxic things into the air. So it's not just the smoke that's dangerous, but air quality could be hazardous for a lot of these places where this air is just falling on top of. All this smoke is falling on top of uh, different cities, different areas. It's, it's a lot. Unstoppable long-term change. Climate change is only going to get worse. A global rise of 1.5 degrees C Celsius will be much worse than now. But when you get down to local scales, we're getting extremes than the models can't capture. Those include local scale droughts and floods. It's these events that are difficult to picture. We're seeing as of This is a cutoff in the picture on the satellite image, but you can see 80 kilometers. The ice floating around like this. It's a lot. I'm 
Let's see, this is, this is the latest iceberg here that broke off. Gonna come out like a tooth. Like this. We'll move out. We get caught up in the currents. I went into this thing. We don't know how tall it is. That's the other thing with these glaciers that we don't know their exact uh, height. You don't know, look around, you just measure, like, okay, this one is 38 kilometers. These are massive, massive bodies of freshwater ice. Largest on the planet. We're seeing, like, this right here. Look at the size of these. If we're worried about doomsday glaciers, so to speak, they're right here. They're moving, they're migrating, they're moving away from Antarctica, and they're moving into the seas. Falling away from Antarctica, even. You have just these massive blocks of ice like this that aren't stuck. There's nothing keeping them at bay, and they're all moving further north out of the way, out of the Arctic Circle. Two images that make up this, but we're in trouble. We have records amount of fire everywhere and records amount of freshwater ice everywhere. What? We have scientists that are saying that climate change is real. We have scientists giving us a lot of critical data and a lot of reports that read like eulogies because it's scary it is scary it is okay to be scary and people with children i can't imagine being okay with you know like climate change exists my child might not have the same opportunities or the same life as i envisioned a person as a person, as a human being, as a grown-up, because the world is changing. And one day, like a switch, some parts of the world won't have water, some parts of the world will have too much sun, too much fire. And it's not going to get any better. The only way it could have got better is if we reduced our carbon footprint. If we reduced our carbon budget that we keep putting in the air, but what's screwing us up too is these massive wildfires, they cheat in numbers like a great deal. So we're seeing fires burn. And produce records amount of toxic, sick smoke in the air. And you go to the other side of the planet where it's almost frozen. It's not as frozen as it should be, like the Larson shells here collapsed. from CNN. The Middle East is running out of water and parts of it are becoming uninhabitable. Lake Ermia, Iran. The ferries that once shuttled tourists to and from the little islets is less of Iran's Lake Ermia sit rusty, unable to move on what is rapidly becoming a salt plain. Just two decades ago, Ermia was the Middle East's biggest lake. Its local economy, a thriving tourist center, hotels, and restaurants. Lake Ermia's demise has been fast. It has more than halved inside 
from size from 5,400 square kilometers in the 1990s to just 2,500 square kilometers today, according to the Department of Environmental Protection of West Azerbaijan, one of Iranian provinces where the lake is located. There are now concerns it will disappear entirely. Another lake gone. We've been reporting on this lake in Serbia. We're in trouble. And we're not going to truly understand the trouble until the desperation sets in. For countries that have no access to water, water is going to have to be brought into these countries in massive amounts. Are they just going to have to deal with the hell? Consequences of water becoming even scarcer are dire. Areas could become uninhabitable. Tensions over how to share and manage water resources like rivers and lakes could worsen. More political violence could erupt talking about here we're talking about desperate people that need to survive here's this a study by the Iranian energy ministry found in Mize of the lake was more than 30% attributable to climate change. It is a vicious cycle. In Jordan, one of the most water-stressed countries in the world, people have become used to living with very little water. Most Jordanians on lower incomes will live on 40 liters a day for all their needs. Jordan now has a... Jordan... It's one of the most water-stressed countries in the world. In many Jordanian homes, water isn't necessarily available every day. Jordan now has a critical shortage of water. Water reaches the houses in Jordan once or twice a week, even in the capital, Amman. A tomato farmer looks off towards an area where the Dead Sea has receded and Gore Aditha, Jordan. You can see water receding as it the lake just vanishes. Time of a lifetime. We're seeing these Massive bodies of water dry up. The and it's like you, if these areas are left salty, it's not like you're going to have more growing area. Plus, it's a drought. Lake's gone. 
You're not planting anything in a flood plain like that. How many lakes go away like this due to heat, due to exploitation, due to uh, dams being set up everywhere? You, you can't really do anything whenever your neighbor builds a dam. Many farmers, including me, are seriously considering leaving this profession, which is inherited from father, from grandfather, and to start looking for more profitable jobs that guarantee a better future for our children. Official charged man for f starting California wildfire that has burned more than now it has burned over 120,000 acres. It was 45,000 acres as of this uh, July 25th yesterday. So, uh, a Northern California wildland fire that exploded overnight into the state's largest blaze this wildfire season destroying structures and prompting thousands of evacuations was allegedly started by a man who pushed a burning car into a gully. The suspect's name was not immediately released. Why would you do this? The car went down an embankment approximately 60 feet and burned completely, spreading flames that caused the park fire. Park, park fire is also the largest 2024 uh, wildfire of the state. In Oregon, the Durkee fire in Baker County, which was sparked by lightning strike on July 17th, had grown to nearly 270,000 acres, or about 400 square miles. This is out of the CBC. 
Another oil spill reported in Point Aw, Tremblay, days after cleanup for last spill completed. Contaminated source is land-based. Oil slick appeared on the St. Lawrence River on Thursday, just a few days after a containment cleanup operation was carried out. Can't, can't win. Not going to find whoever probably doing this either. But the source is coming out of. Given the containment is from a land source, a storm sewer, the Environment Ministry is now leading the investigation with support from the CCG, the ministry spokesperson confirmed Friday. It noted that additional samples are being taken to confirm the containment passed through the storm sewer pipe. from a few days ago apocalyptic 150 degree heat dome smashes temperature records as the world bakes dubai is ranked as the most dangerous city in terms of high summer heat in the world with the high heat occurring it on approximately 89 percent of summer days so heat index is so is reaching as high as 113 degrees fahrenheit in the heat index of 144 degrees it would be extremely dangerous if you barefoot walking around Whoa. Huge sinkhole causes chaos in Guadalajara. Surprisingly, no injuries or accidents were reported when a massive sinkhole opened up along Guadalajara's main boulevard on Thursday morning. That is massive. See the human for scale here on the bottom side?
That's good news. No injuries, no accidents. Just a huge, huge sinkhole. Deadly rat disease, uh, hantavirus, spreads to humans, kills four in U.S. Let's see. Health alert issued in the state of Arizona in the United States after a rodent-borne hantavirus killed four people, all in the state of Arizona. From January to July, the Arizona Department of Health Services documented seven instances of hantavirus pulmonary syndrome, a serious and occasionally lethal respiratory disease. Two cases found in, uh, in California, primarily carried by deer mice in the Grand Canyon State. That is hantavirus. Be intubated when you get sick with it. Let's see what else we got here. is uh from the guardian u.s oil company ran 1977 article predicting climate crisis could cause starvation what we're seeing right now marathon petroleum predecessor warned of potential for social and economic calamities and decades old publication so they knew about it the whole time and still went with it because of money and power and control Sounds about right. It is just that simple. Fifty years ago, that global temperature rise potentially linked to industrial expansion could one day cause widespread starvation and other social and economic calamities. So, warnings like this were becoming more widespread in the scientific literature of the time. It would be more than a decade before global heating gained mainstream attention in 1988 following NASA scientist James Hensey's, Hansen's testimony to Congress and the establishment of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Nobody responded to comment. Last year it reported a net income 
of $10 billion USD. The current Honolulu lawsuit alleges that Marathon contributed to climate obstruction by belonging to industry associations that spent decades trying to convince the public that science linking coal, oil, and gas to climate change was shaky and unreliable. Pestilence, starvation, drought. To no one's product may bring that about and bury the evidence is unspeakable. It is evil, unspeakable evil. I right, thank you for joining me so far. If you haven't already, please click the follow button on Twitch. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're watching the uh, recorded version that I upload up to YouTube later after this stream. So if you want to keep up with live coverage, go to twitch.com slash one great earth. That will be me. And you'll be able to follow and keep track of all the updates as I try to break down today's most pressing climate news and looking at massive amounts of smoke from the UK to Alaska California's largest wildfire of the year is zero. California's largest wildfire of the year is zero percent contained. And zero percent contained. The northern part of the state at a ferocious speed, driven by unpredictable winds. This time on Wednesday, the park fire had burned about two square miles. Forty-eight hours later, it has exploded. More than 250 square miles. That's five times the size of San Francisco. Thousands of people have been forced to evacuate as the flames, allegedly sparked by an arsonist, ripped through homes, buildings, and cars. Burning across the West and into Canada, where a monster wildfire there has destroyed about a third of the structures in the resort town of Jasper. We have reports from across the region, and CBS's Jonathan Bigliotti will start us off from Northern California. Tonight, crews are struggling to contain this massive fire. We are talking flames several hundred feet high. The extreme wind is in the forecast through this evening. The concern now being these flames will be pushed out of the woods and into neighborhoods. California's largest wildfire explodes. The park fire, now so big, it's clearly seen on satellite. Over 175,000 acres burned. Authorities now zeroing in on this car, which the DA says was set on fire and pushed into a gully. The suspected driver, 42-year-old Ronnie Stout, now faces a charge of arson. 
Fire has already destroyed well over a hundred structures and forced thousands to flee. This fire, now dangerously close to the town of Paradise, destroyed nearly six years ago. 85 people were killed. The extreme wildfire danger now stretching into Canada. My colleague Carter Evans is near the hard hit town of Jasper, Alberta. This is Alberta's premier right here. She's head of the provincial government here outside of Jasper, the fire command post for a first hand look. Parts of the town are apocalyptic. The premier says more than 300 or about a third of the buildings here were damaged or destroyed. More than 25,000 tourists and residents evacuated ahead of the flames. John Clark, what out your home? It's gone. There's nothing to look at. It's a foundation. That's all that's left. But he plans to rebuild. Jasper National Park is considered a crown jewel for Canada, much like Yosemite or Yellowstone. Together we'll get through this and we will build back. And no matter what comes, we are not going to lose the enduring magic of Jasper. Fortunately, the weather right now is cooperating. It's been in the 40s overnight and it's been raining. And park officials say that's pretty much extinguished the flames in the town of Jasper. But the wildfire is still burning in the surrounding forest. It's about the size of Detroit. That means residents might not be allowed home for weeks. Major? Much building back to do. Carter Evans, thank you. Unreal fires. Seeing flames of over 300 feet tall. All right. 
I thank you for your time. For watching this on replay, I appreciate it. We'll call the stream here. Uh, I thank you so much. I hope that I was able to get content out that might affect you to understand uh, what we're dealing with here, especially this year going forward. Maybe the lowest sea ice conditions that we've had. Thank you once again. Please take care.